Greetings, it's Alutations, Geo Nerds. So what's this great big 40 ton granite ghoulie sitting on top of a piece of reef got to do with a comet? Yeah, that again, coming in, smacking into the ocean this time, and these great big pieces of reef, 20 metres up and 200 metres inland. Hang, Hang around, around, we'll find out together. together. Well, here we go, Geonauts, geostationary satellite diving down on Australia. We'll make that weather go away. It does that by itself anyway. And we're, today we're going to go somewhere interesting, and uh, it's probably not where you think. So here's um, Western Australia, all the fertile lands there, beautiful part of the world. Bit of sand there, but that's all right. There's Perth there and uh, Rotty, Rottnest Island. Well, we're going out here, probably just flying over that missing aeroplane somewhere there. But anyway, that's another story. And uh, what we're going to was going to the um, uh, the uh, Burkel Impact Crater site, and it's deep in the Indian Ocean, 4,000 metres, four kilometres underwater. And uh, it was only discovered fairly recently, and there it is. I'm going to pull back into space for you so you get a bit of a look at where we are. There's Madagascar there, Mauritius and all those other islands. Down below there, there's the one that the atomic bomb wasn't set off on. Anyway, let's have a look at the rest of it. Well, folks, here we are in the Indian Ocean. Here's the uh, southern Indian rift zone. You can see where the C4 is splitting there and it's spreading apart. And here's our crater. Nothing to do with the rift zone. That's just where it hit. But that's it there being confirmed uh, by drills. They've done some drilling. And uh, here's another map, which is a bit more uh, uh, global for you, pointing to where it is in, on the Earth. Uh, in the middle of nowhere. Not quite the middle, but it's certainly on the way to the middle. Uh, here we've got a little bit of a better map. This one's uh, showing you the topography on the floor. Yes, that is 3,000 metres and 4,000 metres, four kilometres of water. That's about 36 kilometres round. And we'll talk about its age later. Here's another couple of maps. The bottom one shows you the age of the rocks it's put, drilled through. Uh, doesn't really mean much, it can't be any older than that, but that's it. And the top shows you the depth yet again, which is ridiculous. And uh, here's our little uh, tectonic plate map. And I'll put a ring on it to show you where it is, down there. And uh, yeah, it, the fact there's a plate there is actually quite irrelevant, but lucky shot. Anyway, this is what did it, of course. It's a comet this time, not an asteroid. This is not an asteroid impact. They believe it's a comet impact. There's no uh, mineral residues there that are like asteroids. And the crater it produced looks more like a comet crater. And here's some simulations of the difference between an asteroid crater on the right and a comet crater on the left so yeah and of course they both produce a huge tsunami how do we know that well we found this crater by seeing tsunami deposits on australia madagascar africa india and following them back to the source and having a bit of a look and they found it these are chevron hills chevron dunes chevron deposits i'm not going to go into it here but the guy over at Oz Geographics does some awesome videos on this. <clears throat> I'll put a link to his channel in the bottom. That's what his channel looks like. Uh, great videos, by the way. I haven't met you, but I really enjoy them. So keep it up. And uh, yeah, so he's got a great series that explains that in depth. There's no point doing it again. He's done a great job. This is Mr. Buckley, Mr. Henry Buckley, when he was younger, probably out on the boat. Uh, and he was a, a uh, just an amazing guy and here he got a bit older specialized in the microscopic diatomes of off the seafloor sediment and there's a collection there this lady is um dallas abbott now dallas abbott did the 3d microscopy of the actual deposits from this thing she's a hero still with us fantastic stuff this is in south this is the, in the south coast of western australia this is a 40 ton granite boulder on top of a piece of reef and it didn't roll up there this is over on dirk hartog island 
This is 20 metres above the water and it's hundreds of metres inland and this field continues. These are pieces of reef that are being deposited all across this island. So this thing's been hit by something big. This is a gravimetric map. I thought it was going to be a lot more useful than it was, but it was so damn good I didn't get, dare throw it out. This is the gravity mapped of the whole of the Indian Ocean. Pretty cool, but unfortunately it doesn't do much for us. So, um, and this is also a uh, bathyspheric map from the 1960s. I got it and I went, oh wow, and it tells us absolutely nothing, but it's such a cool map. I couldn't throw it away, I've got to share it with you. You can grab it off a still if you want to. This is another one. This one's a bit older. As you can see, the techniques have changed somewhat. But uh, still, interesting piece of art. Now, uh, this happened about uh, oh, 3000 BC. I wonder if there was a bloke somewhere who was talking to someone and said, hey mate, there's a big flood coming. You should build a boat. Because all these cultures have flood myths, all of them. So it's not beyond my thinking that about 2800 BC, uh, something hit these uh, communities and that's where it is. So what we have here is some global temperatures done off ice cores and uh, 2800, which is on the far right, is when our little impactor came in. And people talk to me about, um, I've got to say his name right, Milankovic cycles. This is Mr. Milankovic, nice guy, long dead, Serbian astronomer. These cycles run in, there's four cycles, 41,000 years, 25,000 years, 112,000 years, 112,000 years. They're not close. They didn't cause this. Milankovic cycles are real and I'm, they're very interesting. Not for this video, but yeah, this isn't it. So there was some climate change out of this thing. Uh, this is just an amazing map. Again, I thought it was going to be really useful to us. It isn't. This is also a uh, magnetic anomaly map of the world. So we now know there was a very big tsunami. You'll hear all sorts of heights thrown around, but hundreds of metres possibly. And what dawned on me was, we think we see all these chevrons and look at Oz Geography, see all that, but what about the native peoples of Western Australia? They may have lived on the coast. It would have wiped out a whole generation of these people, gone about 2800 BC. And the same all around the Pacific Rim, India, Africa, Madagascar. In Madagascar, these things really penetrated. So anyway, that's it. Wasn't that painful, was it? Um, all I've got to say is keep rocking. T-Rock's out. <laughs>